Do you want to learn how to build AI-powered applications in spring using GPT-4.0, the latest and most advanced model from OpenAI? Well, if you do, you're in luck. That's exactly what we're going to do today. OpenAI just launched their newest flagship model, GPT-4.0, and it comes packed with some exciting features. Starting with 50% lower pricing, GPT-4.0 is 50% cheaper than GPT-4 Turbo, two times faster latency, and 5x higher rate limits. Now, I've done some initial kind of tests on my own local machine, and I don't have any benchmarks to share, but I can tell you that it feels significantly faster when I'm just working through some demos and running them on my local machine. GPT-4.0 in the API currently supports text and vision capabilities. It has 128K context window and has a knowledge cutoff date of October 2023. And in this tutorial, I want to teach you how we can access this new model and use it in both chat and vision capabilities. So with that, the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to head over to start.spring.io to create a new application. We are going to use Java. We are going to use Maven, the latest version of Spring Boot. Let's go ahead and fill out some metadata about this project. Uh, what do we want to call this? We'll call this Hello GPT 4.0. And I'm going to use Java 21. And we're just going to add a couple of dependencies here. I'm going to use the web. And then since we are working with OpenAI, that is not the right one, Dan. Since we are working with OpenAI, I am going to choose OpenAI. And that's all we need. We can go ahead and click Generate, download this project as a zip file, open it up in whatever text editor or IDE you're most productive in. I'm going to go ahead and open it up in IntelliJ. And with that, Let's write some code. All right, so we're going to get started here. I have my main application class. I need to do a couple of things before we write any code. Uh, the first is in application.properties. I went ahead and set a couple of properties. So we need to set our OpenAI API key. I could have hard coded it in there, but I'm using an environment variable. So go ahead and uh, try and follow that approach so we don't leak our keys. And then I'm going to set the model. So we were taking advantage of the newest model in the G GPT family, which is GPT-4.0. So that is what I'm setting the model to. Now, the next thing is in the palm.xml, I am using the current latest stable version of Spring AI, and that is 0.8.1. I want to change this to 1.0.0 snapshot. So I want to take advantage of some of the multi-model support and to do that, we're going to have to use the snapshot version. Now, if you're in the future and there's a 1.0 uh, release available, then you can just change that to the 1.0.0 milestone 1, for, for example. But if you're on a snapshot, you need to go ahead and add one more uh, block of repositories to say here is where you're going to get the snapshots from. So with that in place, I can go ahead and save. I'm going to reload Maven, and we should be good to go. So I can create my first class. I'm going to go ahead and create a Java class called uh, chat model. So chat model. And we'll go ahead and create this as a REST controller because we're going to create an endpoint for it. And we'll set this to a request mapping of slash chat. So I'm going to go ahead and start by getting an instance of the chat client. So I'll say private final chat client chat client, and then I'll get this through constructor injection. If this is kind of new to you, go back and check out my Spring AI introduction video where we kind of cover that. So I'm going to create a git mapping to slash dad jokes because we're all about the dad jokes here. And we're going to create a new method that is going to return a string called jokes. It is going to take in a request parameter. So this is going to be the topic of the dad joke. So I'll set the value to topic. Uh, I'll set a default value of dogs. So we're going to get uh, dad jokes about dogs. And then I'll go ahead and assign this to a variable called topic. So with that, uh, we are ready to go. Now the first thing I'm going to need is a prompt template. So I'll say new prompt template. And I'll say, tell me a dad joke about. And then I'll go ahead and insert our placeholder here for our topic. We'll go ahead and replace that later. And then I'll get a variable of that called prompt template. With that, I can use the prompt template to go ahead and create, which takes in a map. So we could say map.of, and you're going to replace topic with the argument that is sent to this me method. So with that, I uh, create a variable for that called prompt. 
And finally, we can go return chat client dot call, and we're going to use the prompt. And what we're going to get back is a string. So I want to just say get result, get output, get content. All right, so with that, uh, if we've made no errors, we should be able to run this application. Everything looks good. Let's head over to our terminal. And I'm gonna use a program called HTTPIE, kind of like curl, but a little bit easier to use. We're making a request, a get request to localhost 8080 slash chat slash dad jokes. And let's see if we get a response back. And we do, sure, how about this one? Why did the dog sit in the shade? Because he didn't want to be a hot dog. Oh, that is great. Uh, so we can go ahead and pass in a different topic to this if we wanted to. So we can say topic is equal to, uh, let's just say cats. And if we can go ahead and get another response back. <clears throat> Why was the cat sitting on the computer? Because it wanted to keep an eye on the mouse. Great one. Uh, and I don't know if you can notice there, but uh, the response back from OpenAI's GPT-40 was pretty fast. Uh, I, again, I don't have any benchmarks on this, but I've been doing this a lot with different models. And even on some sim simple kind of prompts, uh, I noticed it was taking a while. This feels very fast to me, so I'm excited about that. All, again, it's faster, it's cheaper, and you have five times the rate limit. So all of those things add up to a better experience for us. Okay, so that was simple. We've kind of seen that before. Now let's get into some of the multi-model support. All right, to make this work, I've added a couple of images, one that I've downloaded from Unsplash. It's just uh, an image of a, looks like a little like sitting area with a laptop and coffee and glasses and a little tray. And the idea here is I'm, I want to be able to ask uh, the GPT-40 to describe this image. I want to be able to say, here's an image, go ahead and tell me what you see in this image. So that's going to be one step. Um, another one that we're going to do is I took some code from a previous tutorial where we talked to OpenAI's GPT-40 just in Java alone. So here's just a simple Java program that does that. And what I want to do is kind of give it this image. So this is an image of code and do some things with it. One, hey, can we describe what, what this code is doing? And two, take this and give me the actual code back. Maybe I didn't have some code. Maybe I just had an image of code and I want to get all of the code out of that image. So a couple of fun things, a, a few experiments here. We're just having fun, but I think this will be uh, some fun here. So let's go ahead and create a new class here. We're going to call this the image model and we're going to set this as a rest controller. And again, the first thing we need is a chat client. So chat client, we'll get this through constructor injection. And we can go ahead and create our first endpoint, which is going to be, uh, let's just say, I want to do an image describe. So I want to describe this image. So we're going to get a string back. We're going to say, we're going to call this describe image. And uh, that is all we need there. So the first thing that we need is we need to get um, the byte array of this particular image. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that image name. And what we'll say is, hey, let's get a new class path resource. So class path re, oops, class path resource. Um, and from there, we can say uh, this is in uh, images and then the name of that image, which is JPEG. And then all I'll say is go ahead and get the contents as a byte array. Now we can get um, that, uh, let's just call that image data. And that should be good, no? Yes, okay, so uh, we'll just need to add an exception for that. So now we have the image data. So now what I wanna do is say, let's create a new user message. And if we look at user message here, we see it can take a string, a resource, or a string with a list of media. Um, also, it can take a var args of media. So you can either create a list or just a var. So what I'm going to say is um, the first thing is going to be the message. So I'm going to say, can you uh, please explain what you see in the following image? All right, then what we need to do is we either need to create a list or just a var. So I'm just gonna say new media. 
And what we need to pass into that is the uh, MIME type. So we'll say MIME type utils dot image JPEG. And then we need to pass in the image data. So that is going to give us a uh, user message back. And uh, what is it complaining about here? Inspection usage of APR marked for removal. That's okay. Um, okay. So now what we need to do is call our chat client. So we're going to say chat client dot call. We're going to pass in a new prompt with our user message. And then what we want to get back from there is the chat response. So we'll say response. And that will give us our response. So now we can return response dot get result dot get output dot get content, and that will be our string. So let's go ahead and see if we can't run our application here. And you already saw the image, so let's see what the LLM thinks of the image. So uh, localhost 8080 slash image describe. And if there are no errors, it looks like it's thinking. So a little bit longer, it's kind of taking that image, dissecting it, um, trying to look at it and figure out what it is. So the image shows a cozy, minimalistic setup on a bed. There's a silver laptop with an Apple logo on the back, indicating that it is a MacBook. Impressive. The laptop is placed on a white bed with uh, white bedding and white pillows. In front of the laptop, there's a wooden tray on which a pair of eyeglasses and a large mug of coffee with a latte art are placed. The overall scene suggests a comfortable and relaxed environment, possibly for working or studying from home. Pretty impressive if you ask me. All right, so we're gonna do something similar. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this uh, just so we don't have to uh, write all this code again. And this time we're gonna say that this is a code describe. So let's just say this image name is code. Now the image data that we're gonna get is from this one. So let's go ahead and copy this. And we'll paste that in there. So we're getting the image data. We're gonna change this user message. The following is a screenshot of some code. Can you do your best to provide a description of what the code is doing, right? So that sounds pretty good. Uh, again, we're um, saying new media. This is a JPEG. Uh, no, this is a ping. So let's say image ping. And then we're passing in the image data. We're going to um, call with our new prompt here. We are going to use the chat client to call. We're going to pass in a prompt with the user message. And then what we're going to get back from that response is the result, the output, and then the content. Just so we don't get all that structured data back, we just want whatever the result is, and that is the content. So let's go ahead and see if it can do that. Now again, just for reference, looking at this image, this is using OpenAI's GPT-40 in just a Java program. So we're making a call using the JDK HTTP clients, getting a response back, and that really is just being able to talk to that API. So let's go ahead and restart this, and then I'm going to say code describe. Let's see what we get back from this. Okay, so the given code is a Java application that interacts with the Open API, OpenAI API to request a dad joke about cats. Here's the detailed description of what the code does. <clears throat> you can see it has a main method, uh, has an API key, uh, it has a request body definition, the HTTP request construction, and then a basically call out and get a response back. In summary, this Java application sends a post request to the OpenAI API to get a dad joke about cats using the GPT-4 model and prints the response to the console. Now, this uh, is using the GPT-4.0 model. Um, so it's, I mean, it's really good, pretty close, not perfect, but uh, really, really good. So I'm gonna do one more thing. Uh, let's go ahead and take that same example. And this time we'll say um, image, image to code. 
And I think everything is the um, same. But what I want to do is just change this prompt that I'm giving it. I'll say, can you translate this from the image into actual code? All right. Uh, so everything else should be the same. Uh, we'll, we'll just need to name this a different name. We'll say image to code. And that looks good. Let's go ahead and restart this. And we'll go back to our terminal. And we'll say uh, image to code. And we'll give it a second to see if it can think through this and basically look at that image, kind of look at it, and then get all of the actual code out. And there it is. Sure, here is the code from the screenshot. So you see um, this, it even got GPT. Uh, so it says 4.0, which is actually 4.0. So again, not perfect, but man, really, really close. And this is like really cool to me. I don't know. I just, I thought I was having fun with it. I thought it'd be interesting to show off. All right, there you have it. Uh, Spring AI's multi-model support using GPT 4.0, which was just recently released. And like I said, it has some really great features, uh, two times faster, noticeably faster in the demos that I'm running, uh, cheaper, and five times the rate limit. So all in all, pretty cool stuff. And Spring 1.0, the snapshots, has support for being able to use some of these vision capabilities. We, we just kind of really touched the surface today with being able to like, hey, tell me what this image is made up of. And we got some like really good details about that image. And then having a little fun with some code, we took a code screenshot, we were able to get a description of what it does, and we were able to act actually get the code out of it. So man, a lot of fun. Things are rapidly evolving in the AI world. Things are always changing. Uh, Spring AI seems to be on the cusp of it, and I'm just really enjoying this project and having fun with all the different things that we can do. So I hope the, the wheels are turning in your head in some of the types of applications that you might be able to build with this. So with that, friends, if you know, you know the drill at this point, right? If you found value in this, do me a big favor. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, happy coding. Happy coding.